Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the first day of the seven day detox. The whole purpose of this week is to just help give our body, our liver, a little bit of a break in between the holidays, especially when there's a lot more refined sugar, more refined carbohydrates in general that can just really clog up the liver, slow down just the whole processes and make us not feel so great. So this week we're focusing on the foods that really help promote liver detoxification and removing those that inhibit liver detoxification. So today I'm going to be sharing one of my favorite smoothies or my favorite smoothie actually from the seven day detox program. Um, this is what we're following. I have it up right here because I know, oops, um, I have it up right here so that I make sure I actually follow the recipe because I'm notorious for like not following recipes. Um, but this is featured from the seven day detox. It's one of the recipes that you can use during the seven day detox. If you guys are just tuning in and you want to join in, we're starting today. So you can grab the details for the seven day detox linked down description below. Um, but this is called the ginger cacao superfood smoothie. I'm going to be making this for you guys going through um, the different ingredients and what actually is detox promoting about it. And let's make it because I'm breaking my fast a little bit early this morning and I'm hungry, especially after this workout that I did. Okay. So the first ingredient we have an unsweetened base. So with pretty much all my smoothies, you can use a variety of different smoothie bases. You could use water, which is what I've been using lately. Um, mostly just because I've been really lazy, <laughs> uh, when I'm like on top of it, I make my, um, just homemade coconut milk, which really does add like an extra layer of flavor and like thickness and deliciousness to a smoothie. But honestly, I've just been like, even for five minutes, really lazy. Um, so I've been making just with water and honestly, you don't even, you still get so much flavor even with water. So if you're lazy like me, it's fine. Um, now for the next ingredient we're going to be using the dry ingredients first, so I only have to stick with one spoon. We're going to be using chia seeds. So for those of you guys, kind of hard to see, for those of you guys who have gone through the seven day detox and you've looked at, can you see that? It's just focusing on me. Um, for those of you guys who have gone through the seven day detox and you've gone through the whole list of the detox promoting foods, you know that there's different things, different foods that promote different processes of liver detoxification. So there's phase one, phase two, phase three. We want to support all of it. Uh, chia seeds are really great with supporting phase three because it's really high in fiber. If you wanted to go like an extra step further, you could use basil seeds. If you guys have seen my recent video on basil seeds, they're pretty similar nutritionally to chia seeds, um, but basil seeds have like double the amount of fiber. Um, but chia seeds are already really high. So we're going to use about a tablespoon here and I'm just going to put it into my blender. Okay, the next detox promoting food we're doing is kind of like a twofer. We have cacao. So cacao is just the raw natural form of chocolate. And it's just like these little cacao nibs. Let's see if I can. Yep. There you go. So see, it's like these little chocolate nibs that are unsweetened and actually really surprisingly high in um, both high quality fats as well as fiber. So we're going to do about a full tablespoon here to not only get the fiber for the smoothie and to help with phase three detox, but cacao is also really high in antioxidants, especially the raw form. And antioxidants are really important for helping to get rid of the free radicals that are produced during liver detoxification, during that phase two liver detox or phase one rather. Um, so we want to help support the liver, just make it a lot easier and get rid of those free radicals that can cause cellular damage. And then next up, we have some coconut butter. Um, so especially if you aren't using any coconut milk, you're just using water. Uh, this is a great ingredient because when it's blended, it kind of naturally makes a little bit of coconut milk. So it's nice if you're feeling really lazy like me, but you know, it's winter when it's just like completely stuck to the bottom and you need to take a knife to it. It's a little bit of a morning workout. <laughs> I'm going to be using about a tablespoon of this with my ice pick. <laughs> During the winter, or during the summer, it's so funny because it will literally get like completely liquid, but during the winter, it's it's pretty solid. So I'm going to use a tablespoon of this, just dump it straight into the blender as well. And that gives some high quality fats that help to um, stabilize blood sugar levels. So especially during the holidays, our sugar intake tends to be higher for most people. Um, and helping the body to stabilize the blood sugar levels is really important for helping to prevent further sugar cravings because it's when we get those dips in blood sugar, you know, we get the really high high from eating like 
a holiday cookie, for example. And then um, as a result, the body has a really pretty drastic drop in blood sugar. And that's when we start to really crave and just immediately need to have some type of cookie, eggnog, whatever it might be. So what we want to do to help prevent those cravings is to have high quality fats to stabilize the blood sugar levels, which speaking of, we are also going to be doing some cinnamon. So what I really like about this smoothie is that it's really, there's so many different, like, like different spices in there to help um, naturally provide flavor without sugar. So with cinnamon, it's actually great because we're going to be using about a teaspoon here. It's great because it has um, blood sugar stabilizing effects. So it's actually been studied to help stabilize blood sugar levels as well. So we're just doubling down on those blood sugar stabilizing perks. Not sure if you guys can hear that, but my dryer is going off telling me that it's done. <laughs> okay. So next up, we also have nutmeg. So for this, is it a quarter? No, an eighth of a teaspoon that we're going to be using. So just a touch so that we get some flavor, um, but not overpowering. You always want to be a little careful with nutmeg because it can like really overpower something, but just a, just a small amount really goes a long way for something like this. Way, LOL, protein joke. So about an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. There's not necessarily like detox promoting perks with nutmeg. It's just, it goes really well with these flavors. And um, we are looking to help to bring flavor into the smoothie without sugar. Because one important component of the seven day detox is not just adding in detox promoting foods, but also removing those that inhibit detox and really high sugar inhibits detox. All right, so our next ingredient is ginger. So I'm going to be using ground ginger. And if you've never used ginger in a smoothie before, it's like, it's really great because it helps to add that extra bite. It just makes, I don't know, it's, don't knock until you've tried it. It's really good. So um, from a detox perspective, we have about a quarter teaspoon there. From a detox perspective, um, ginger is also really helpful for promoting liver detoxification, kind of like turmeric. Oh, there you go. Kind of like turmeric, um, they actually can work really well together. You could even put some turmeric in here if you wanted to. It would change the flavor just a bit, but that would just help to make this even more detox promoting. And then to help bring out the natural sweetness flavor from the other ingredients without adding more sugar in, we're also going to add a pinch, just a pinch of sea salt right into the smoothie. Yeah, just like a light pinch there. Um, that's one way to help bring out sweetness without adding in more sugar is just to add in like a pinch of sea salt helps to highlight the, um, like sweet flavor without adding in more because the only real sugar component we're having in this is from a half of a frozen banana. As you can see, this is a pretty small banana. Um, it's, I mean, I, I think this is actually like a larger banana that I put into quarters because it was so big. Uh, but a, about a half of a small banana will only give you about 11 grams of total net carbs, um, depending on the size. So if you are very carb sensitive, you might want to swap that out for like coconut meat, frozen coconut meat would be a good option. Um, and that would help to really cut down on sugar even further. But if you're not super carb sensitive, but even if you're moderately carb sensitive, that half banana should be fine. Okay. So now we get into the like liquidy ingredients. <laughs> I always like to wait for those until the end so that I don't have to use a bunch of spoons and then have to um, wash multiple dishes. So I'm also adding in almond butter. So another high quality fat, about a tablespoon, um, but it also has glycine. So glycine is an amino acid that's also used during liver detoxification. You can also get quite a bit of glycine from uh, bone broth. So if you guys have made my broccoli soup before and use bone broth, you're getting a ton of glycine, mm, but that's just a plant-based option that you can use to get your glycine content up. And then lastly, I'm this morning using some Greek yogurt. You can also use unsweetened protein powder as well, um, but it's just good to switch it up. So I'm just using a little bit, about a cup of Greek yogurt for the protein content. So protein, just like fat, is also important for stabilizing blood sugar. But during this seven-day detox, specifically my seven-day detox, we're not just focused on the detox, which the liver detox portion, that is really important, but we're also looking at helping to prevent future sugar cravings as well. So we really need to make sure we're stabilizing blood sugar levels. We're eating enough high quality protein to help support satiety that you're, you're not getting those cravings anyway. So that's where protein and fat are both really important. Oh, a little more in there. 
So you can use um, protein powder in this instead. Um, I'm just switching it up this morning, or you could do like a 50-50 as well. So we have everything right here. I'm just gonna give it a quick blend, and then we'll try it out. I got a slightly bigger smoothie, uh, smoothie container, a glass is the word I was looking for because I knew this was going to be a little bit bigger because of the Greek yogurt, which adds volume. All right. Oh my gosh. Cheers. <laughs> mm. So many different flavors. Oh my gosh. If you haven't tried testing out, like putting in different herbs or spices, which I have some smoothies coming out soon with herbs in it. That tastes amazing. But um, you guys have seen me use mint before in a smoothie. Also really great. But adding in different spices really helps to make it so that you don't miss the sugar. Highly recommend it. Um, obviously, if you haven't tested this smoothie out before or any of mine, I do use quite a lot of different spices or herbs um, in my smoothies for that exact reason. Cheers. Mm. Ah, so good so creamy <laughs> especially with the coconut butter really creamy delicious okay i'm going to go through and answer some questions uh i wasn't able to see if any came through during this but if you have questions put four question marks before and after i'm going to be drinking my smoothie during this as well but let me see all right skills many happy monday good morning dave hello from 30 degree wisconsin Good morning, Kelly and Kayla and Guilen, Martha and Michelle. Okay, I think I see. Oh, Jean, um, sitting in the Boston, sitting in Boston at Logan Airport, waiting to board an airplane. Well, safe travels. Okay, Michelle, I recently sprained my ankle and I'm wearing a boot. What do you recommend for exercise for me during this detox week? Whatever you're able to do, um, of course, if you have a boot, you probably aren't able to do very much. You might only be able to do upper body um, training. I mean, this is something you'll just want to first see whatever you're able to do from your doctor. Like, I don't know if you're able to get in a pool, like a heated pool, obviously, since it's winter and swim um, like with a with like some type of plastic bag covering a cast. If it's a cast. Um, or if you can only do upper body workout, but whatever you're able to do, I mean, you're also healing during this time. So you don't want to overstress your body. Remember, this is also time to take stress off the body and to allow it to naturally heal during the detox, but also since you do have your injury. Um, so with all that in mind, just do, do as much as you can, but don't overstress your body while you are um, healing. Okay. What about using powdered cacao instead? I'm not sure if you mean cacao or cocoa. So there's kind of a couple differences. I love using um, unsweetened cocoa to really add a ton of chocolatey flavor, which you could totally do to this just as like an extra add on as well. Uh, the cacao, I, I don't usually like to grind um, like, for example, chia seeds or flax seeds before I go to use them. Same thing with uh, cacao, just because it's, you know, you have the fats in there that can get rancid when exposed to air. And so when you grind them, especially if it's pre-ground, then it's typically going to be a little rancid. So that's why I like to use just cacao nibs rather than like the powdered versions. Um, yes. So someone's asking, can I use fresh ginger? Absolutely. This is just, again, me being lazy. It's right here. So it's easy. <laughs> Uh, can I use pecans instead of walnuts in my grain free oatmeal? Yes, um, there are reasons why walnuts tend to be a little bit better, especially because of the omega three content, which can also be very useful during um, the detox week. But if like you don't have it, and it's just one of the um, like small swaps you're making, it's not going to make a huge negative impact or anything. So you can feel free to swap that. Uh, Maria, 
Can you use almond milk for the coconut milk in your detox recipes? Yes. So for pretty much any, actually, I can't think of any recipe um, of mine where it wouldn't be okay, but for pretty much all my recipes, you can use any unsweetened nut or seed milk option that you prefer. So like, for example, my mom loves hemp seed milk. She makes her own hemp seed milk. So she uses hemp seed milk for her smoothies. I've been using water lately, but I tend to like coconut milk. Um, almond milk, I just think is a little thin and I don't really particularly love the taste, but if you like it, you could use that. Uh, Jessie, did she say if she's going to post the recipe? Um, I'll post it all in the description down below after the live stream has gone up. So just stay tuned and look out for it there. It's also, of course, in the seven day detox program, which you can find linked down description below. Kat, cheers. <laughs> cheers. <clears throat> Great question. So Lori, I've been watching you for a while and I don't think I've ever seen you add greens in your smoothies. Is there a reason why? Mostly because I like to eat them. Um, I've just found, especially from a gut health perspective, I prefer to have my, for my own personal goals, I prefer to mostly have my greens cooked. Um, but I, and you know, like you could cook, freeze, and then throw your veggies into your smoothie. That's not really a problem. Um, but I usually have some type of greens with my lunch and dinner as well. So I just like to eat them. There's not really much reason other than that. That I do have some smoothies that have some greens in there, but other than that, like you can feel free to add in like frozen spinach if you wanted to or whatever other type of greens you want. It's just personally not what I prefer. I prefer to eat it later. Lisa, thoughts on continuous glucose monitors? I think they can be useful for some people, but I think that for a lot of people, it's a lot of information that I don't know. It's it can sometimes be information overload for some people. Um, if you find it useful, great. But if if not, it's not something you need. In other words, you can use it if you're really trying to fine tune what's causing your blood sugar spike to really understand how your blood sugar works. But other than that, it's something that I think can just be a little information overload. I'm not sure if you guys did not hear that. Those are my chickens going off. <laughs> um. Sue's along the way are detox recipes and instructions in your videos, newbie here. So for all my detox recipes, I have the seven day detox, which is what we're following this week. It's my seven day detox program, link down description below. You can also find it on my website at autumnlnutrition.com forward slash shop. For, the, for those of you guys who are just tuning in right now, this is day one of the seven day detox, um, seven day holiday detox, where we're really focused on helping to give the body a bit of a break and just allow the liver to kind of catch up. Because what happens is when we have like a lot of sugar, alcohol, refined carbohydrates, things that are common during the holidays, it can just clog up the liver and it gets stored as fat around the liver. So the, if we're if we're not really giving it a break, it just keeps on building that fat up, which eventually can lead to fatty liver disease. So it's just a good idea to give your body a little bit of a break, allow it to address that fat buildup. And, you know, especially in between the holidays where it can sometimes be like six or seven weeks straight of a lot of not great eating. Um, Melissa, is half and half okay to have in your coffee while detoxing? Yeah, so in the seven-day detox, um, there is a page on dairy and meat where I talk specifically about that and how it's actually not a problem at all. There's even some perks on why you would want to include dairy during the detox. But yeah, you can definitely use that, and it's a great zero-sugar alternative. Um... Okay, PB. Thoughts on adding homemade um, milk keeper keeper to the smoothie. So I don't know if you saw, I forget when it was, it was maybe like four months ago. I shared my golden milk smoothie on my blog. It uses kefir. Oh my gosh, it was so good. So that one actually um, does have a lot of the similar detox promoting perks. So you should check that out on my blog. Just go to autumnlnutrition.com forward slash blog. And I have a whole healthy recipe section and I have a kefir smoothie. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. I think you'll love it. Definitely check that out. I think I saw one about working out. My eating window is from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. That's actually pretty similar to me. Today, I'm breaking my fast a little bit earlier, of course, so I can smoothie cheers with you guys. Uh, but what would be the recommended time to do strengthening at strengthening exercises with dumbbells or circuit training, um, body weight exercise? Okay, 
So basically like when's the best time to work out with intermittent fasting? Um, I like to work out in a completely fasted state when growth hormone is naturally higher. If you can't consistently get to that time, then, you know, ideally before the evening, I just don't typically recommend having higher intensity exercise in the evening when it could raise your cortisol levels and make it difficult to fall asleep. Okay, I'm going to answer a couple more questions and then I want to go drink this. <laughs> just me being a little selfish. Uh, is there a downside to staying on the detox for several weeks versus one? Am I missing benefits from the 21 day plan? So Laura, I know that you have both. Laura has been, um, an A and P for a while and she's used both the 21 day and the detox. Um, I, so for someone who's brand new, I do recommend that you first start with the seven day detox, but it just helps to prep the body for actually using intermittent fasting. Remember, we're talking a lot about stabilizing blood sugar levels with the seven day detox, with helping to prevent cravings. That's such a huge, important first step before you even get started with um, intermittent fasting period. It just makes it such a more smooth transition. It helps to boost energy levels. It helps the body to more easily transition to using fat as fuel. But if you've been using, like let's say you did the seven day detox and then you did the 21 day program, and then you just go back to using the seven day detox as well, because you've incorporated the 21 day intermittent fasting program um, principles already, that's totally fine. There's not a problem with continuing to support your liver by having liver promoting foods and not having high refined sugars or anything along those lines. So feel free to still go back to that. But I do recommend if you're a beginner that you do the seven day detox and then do the 21 day program. Um, ooh. Mary is making my Greek yogurt recipe, which that's actually what this is. This is my homemade Greek yogurt. It's so much less expensive. Great. And if you have a hard time finding like grass fed um, whole milk or full fat Greek yogurt, this is the way to do it. I have a recipe you can look on my um, website or you can just type into YouTube how to make Greek yogurt. And I'm pretty sure my video is like the first one that pops up. It's super easy. I actually have some being made like right in this corner out of frame. Mina, can I swap banana for monk fruit? Like, can you have monk fruit instead of banana? During the seven day detox, I do recommend not having like even stevia or monk fruit. Not that it inhibits detox because it it's not a sugar. So it doesn't inhibit detox. But if you find that you struggle with sugar cravings, then the goal is to help to reset that. And then to slowly add in a little bit of those things like monk fruit, which exactly like with my protein powder, it uses a small amount of monk fruit, but it's not very sweet at all. It's not like overly sweet. But oftentimes we're all just so used to like these overly sweet things that it's good to have that break. So that's why we're just using the natural sugars from like the um, from the banana. And that's it actually <laughs> with a smoothie. So, you know, if you don't struggle with sugar cravings, like, for example, you could use my protein powder in here and still be detox approved. It's just, you know, we, we want to get a clean slate for a week and then just slowly back or slowly add back in some of those um you know, other sweeteners. Okay. One or two more questions. So if Martha can't have dairy, coconut, or yogurt, then that's where you would use the um, unsweetened protein powder for the smoothie instead. Yeah. So Kelly, this is, this is great. So she says she grinds up her cacao nibs with flax in her coffee grinder before she um, blends it. If you don't have a high powered blender, you could definitely do that. Um, I have a Vitamix, so it blends it up really well. Gr great investment. I, I love my Vitamix. Um, but you could also do this too. Yeah. So Liz, same thing here. Instead of the Greek yogurt, you could use a full serving of just unsweetened protein powder. Sam, so is this the type of shake to start the day with or end the day with? I would start it. So this would be either like your first meal or like even you could do a lunch replacement instead. And it is a full meal. It has high quality protein. It has high quality fats and fibers. So it is a meal replacement and you should feel pretty full and satisfied from these smoothies. Uh, but yeah, it is a better option for like your first or second meal. And there go my chickens again. I can hear them squawking. <laughs> Uh, yeah, same thing. I see a couple questions about the timing of it. Okay. 
Hey, Ivana, are there any good indicators of an electrolyte imbalance? Yes. So the main indicators would be like if you have a headache, that's a really, really common one. If you're feeling really tired for no reason, especially like later afternoon, um, that could be a big sign or if you're constipated. So it's actually a really big sign as well. Sometimes muscle cramps. So that typically is more of a magnesium issue than sodium, uh, which all electrolytes. But yeah, those are some of the common ones. Muscle cramps, headaches, uh, low energy and um, constipation. Constipation is one that actually like a lot of people don't realize that's an electrolyte issue. And especially with intermittent fasting where electrolyte imbalances are so common. Um, a lot of people say like, oh, I'm constipated now. Like what's going on? Typically an electrolyte issue. Yep. Recommended blender. I use a Vitamix just like their original, like not like their fanciest ones, just like their original one. If you are making smoothies every day, if you're making keto coffee, couldn't recommend it more because it's, it's like a high power blender. I use it every day. I've had it for like six years or something. And they do have, I think like a five and a 10 year warranty option, which is just great because there's been like one time I've had to send this in and it was totally free for them to fix it. Hmm. Oh, wow. Also another Greek yogurt starting today. Great job. So Aaliyah, how much fat is needed when menstruating to prevent sugar cravings? Totally depends on the person. Um, it is a good idea to help in just to increase the fat content by like one or two servings for each meal, uh, just to see if you like the way I go about it is just making sure that you start with one or two servings per each meal and then seeing if you still have cravings or not. Because if you still have cravings, then you might just need to increase the fat even further. So starting off with like one and then increasing it from there. Um, yeah, so Cynthia, does this aid in digestion? I mean, the most important things for digestion that I've seen for myself, for my clients is activating the MMC. The best way to do that is intermittent fasting. So the only way to actually get that MMC, which is our gut cleaning pathway activated is by not eating. And that's where intermittent fasting can come into play. So starting with the seven day detox and then going into the 21 day program is a really good sequence. Cheers guys. All right. So I'm going to go drink this before it like gets warm, which I guess it's not really going to, cause it's pretty cold out, <laughs> but I just want to drink it. Um, but cheers to the seven day holiday detox. If you guys want to join in, it starts today. You can feel free to start tomorrow if you like are just seeing this and you want to join in. Um, but the details, just grab the seven day detox link to the description below. But other than that, smoothie cheers guys. And I'll see you guys soon.